Hey guys, welcome to Data Trek, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at uplift modeling to detect causal effects. Uplift modeling is a technique which has been there from some time, but it is gaining more popularity these days due to its wide applicability. Uplift modeling helps to detect the incremental effect due to the treatment or a change. For example, you have a website or an app and you have done some changes. Now you can train a machine learning model to detect whether the customer will purchase or not. While a propensity model can just detect whether the customer will purchase or not, not because whether there was a change in the app or because anyways the customer was going to purchase or there can be negative impact also that because of the change customer didn't like the UI, he didn't purchase. The machine learning model will just give the propensity while the uplift model can actually detect the uplift which can come due to the changes or a negative impact that can come due to the changes or there is no uplift anyways the customer is going to buy. So propensity model is just unidirectional, it will just detect or uh, emit the probability whether the customer will buy or not while uplift modeling can uh, provide us the causal uh, effect that is because of this treatment whether there was a causal effect on the purchase or not it can detect that. So with that let's get uh, more understanding of uplift model. We will start with the case study. An insurance company has limited budget or time, so they can't call everyone to advertise its latest policy to users with the expired ones. Currently, the agent calls a set of randomly picked customer and it's seen the conversion rate is around 10%. With a desire to be more data driven, the company's data science team wants to increase the conversion. Using the calls that are collected from the website, a model, a model is built to score the customer propensity to convert or buy the policy. Once the model was put into production, the company observed conversion rate increased to 20%. So basically the agents were previously calling randomly uh, picked customer, but now they will call the ones that has been recommended by the model. And they saw because of this recommendation, the conversion rate increased by 20%. So there is 100% improvement over the old process, which had an accuracy or conversion rate of about 10%. It may seem the project was a success, but how do we know if the outbounded phone calls cause the customer to convert. It could be just cherry picking easy wins. The propensity model predicted the customer which were most likely to convert. It did not separate the customers who were already going to purchase without any intervention from the customer that needed to be persuaded or actually called. So welcome to the world of uplift modeling. The propensity to purchase model uses machine learning to answer the question how likely the customer is going to purchase in the future. While uplift modeling improves on that by going one step further and it answers, did my advertising cause the customer to purchase for me? Did I waste money advertising to customer who were already going to purchase from me? Did my advertising make the probability of someone purchasing worse? That is the negative impact. The classic propensity model predicts target by given feature sex, while uplift looks to solve for the impact of treatment on target Y given the feature X. That is whether the treatment has an impact on Y or not. So people uh, or customers can be divided, uh, segregated into four sections. One is people who will purchase no matter what. These are the sure things and we don't need to waste our advertising money on them. People who will purchase only if they are exposed to the advertisement. They are the persuadables which should be actually called or advertised. People who will not purchase no matter what are the lost causes. So there is no point showing them that it's a waste of money because they will anyways not buy. And fourth one are the most dangerous one. People who will not purchase if they are exposed to an advertisement. These are the sleeping dogs. For example, we did a change um, uh, in the website and they didn't, didn't like and they won't buy. Or we advertised uh, them the product and they were irritated with the advertisement that they uninstalled and didn't purchase. So sleeping dogs are the people who are sleeping and we should not disturb them. The propensity model adds value by avoiding loss causes. So the loss causes one which will not buy anyways, the propensity model will be able to detect. But uplift modeling improves the targeting even further by focusing on only the customer who are in the persuadable segment. Those who can purchase if we advertise to them. So what are the common applications of uplift modeling? It can be used in political campaigns to identify and target voters who are on the fence, avoid people who are a dead set on their party and instead only focus on the persuadables. It can be used in health treatment. Suppose a new drug came, uplift modeling can help understand how treatment might impact certain groups differently. 
Perhaps the treatment has a large positive impact on people who are age 50 plus and have underlying health condition but a small impact on the people who are under 50 and healthy. Same thing happened in COVID also. The vaccine was first given to elderly people because there the incremental effect was more than the people who were younger. Lead optimization like the insurance company example. We can provide leads to the agents that call only these set of people who are who falls in the persuadable section. Cross sell. A company wants to run a cross sell campaign where cross sell basically means when uh, two complementary items are uh, sold together. For example, bread, butter, or jeans and t-shirt. So company wants to run a cross sell campaign and don't want to waste uh, by showing to all the customers, but since their budget is limited, they only want to target the persuadable section. Other is retention. A company wants to reach out to customers who are about to churn and save them. The company wants to prevent further upsetting customers by overexposing them with any advertisement. So they need to focus only on the high risk savable customer to uh, reduce the churn. Other is user experience testing. A company wants to understand if a change to their website or app caused the intended results or not. So these are all the uh, examples where uplift modeling can help to detect two things. One is uh, which are the right set of people to target and secondly what was the impact due to the change. So what are the commonly used techniques for uplift modeling. So uh, the first is traditional propensity model that we already saw. It uses feature to simply predict how likely the outcome might be. Actually it doesn't detect uplift it just detect uh, the propensity of customer buying and it can actually ignore the lost causes section that is the customers who will anyways not buy but it can't segregate uh, between the other group which is which are your things or sleeping dogs or persuadables. The pros is it's easy to implement and it can do better by eliminating the lost cause segment. It does not consider incrementality. It does not consider negative treatment impacts. And a part of it there are also direct uplift models. Uh, which can directly detect the uplift that due to the treatment what was the uplift and there are uh, also meta learners so let's first look at direct uplift model building a new algorithm that can directly predict the uplift there are some uh, uplift prediction model available in R and all and the pros are that most likely to give the best and accurate result and cons are that since we are directly detecting the uplift the target variable formulation can be little tricky which we will look at uh, in the next section and I will simplify it and uh, others are the meta learners. So meta learners tricks the transformation of the problem so you can directly estimate uplift using a standard machine learning uh, technique. So basically we know how to solve for a classification or regression problem right. In meta learner they will simply solve a classification and regression problem and the final output will be transformed or manipulated in such a way that it gives us the uplift. So uplift is not uh, directly predicted but in an indirect way it's predicted. So these are called meta learners. They use simple ML techniques to indirectly with some manipulation predict the uplift. So pros are that they are much faster uh, than direct uplift methods. In many scenarios they, the results are comparable to direct method and cons are that because we are using a proxy, we are using a shortcut for a proxy of uplift it may be little inaccurate at times. Now in order to create an uplift model the first and foremost important uh, point is to create an uplift model we must have a randomized control trial in which a random set of customers were targeted with the intervention treatment group and another random set of customers were uh, not targeted that is the control group. So it's a very important criteria for uplift model that we uh, the, the data on which we train the model comes from a randomized control trial that there is a uh, random set of people assigned to treatment random set of people are uh, assigned to the control group. The reason is that when this align assignment is random then only the data will be unbiased and it can give the real causal effect of the treatment. A uplift model uses this information to differentiate between four type of users. So the, uh, after uh, getting trained on this data it can differentiate between these type four type of users which are persuadable, sure things, lost causes and sleeping dogs. So first of all we will look at the easier technique which is the metal learner. These are the indirect uplift models. In uplift modeling we are interested in estimating the causal effect of the treatment and also how the effect is different for different users that is heterogeneous treatment effect. This is very important. In uplift modeling we are trying to detect two things. One is the causal effect of the treatment and secondly how the effect is different for different users that is the heterogeneous treatment effect. I gave an example 
when I was talking about the dis drug discovery, whether the drug has more impact on elderly people or the younger people. So uplift modeling can help us detect what is the causal effect of the treatment, whether the effect is due to the drug or not, and how much the drug is effective for different sections of the people, that is conditional average treatment effect. Metal learner is an indirect way of estimating the model uplift. Metal learner utilizes any supervised ML method which can be classified or regression and the model output is a shortcut to get the uplift with some manipulation. We will look at that and few popular metal learners are S learner, T learner, X learner. We will look at all of them in more details. So let's look at these learners. The S learner is solo learner. We train a single classifier to predict the outcome of interest and include as a feature a dummy variable indicating whether each user received treatment. Uh, so basically we have a randomized control trial where some users, half of the users will be part of treatment group and other half will be part of the control group. So we will have a feature or dummy variable which will indicate whether this user was part of treatment or control group. Now during inference that during prediction each user is scored twice, once with the value of treatment flag equal to 1 and once set to 0. So basically we have trained a model uh, on all the users and user can be part of treatment or user can be part of control and we detect whether uh, the purchase happen or not or uh, the buy happen or not or whatever be the problem be whether if it was a drug pro uh, detecting effectiveness of drug, the drug was effective or not. So uh, the uh, target will be the effectiveness or target will be the order by or not and in the data we will use all the features user features and all other features along with one variable which will be indicative of uh, whether the user was part of treatment or control group and during the prediction time we will make two predicts, prediction one with putting the treatment flag equal to one that is what is the uh, what is the uh, target variable values when treatment is equal to 1 and what is the target variables value when uh, treatment equal to 0. The uplift prediction for user A is defined as user A's prediction when treatment equal to 1 minus user A prediction when treatment equal to 0. So that's the idea. So uh, to predict the outcome of interest and we include a dummy variable indicating whether user was part of the treatment or not. And during inference, the user is scored twice, once with the value of treatment flag set to 1 and once set to 0. The uplift prediction for user A is defined as user A prediction with treatment 1 minus user A prediction with treatment 0. So that's why there is only one model, it's called uh, solo learner and there is a feature which will uh, be a dummy variable uh, indicating whether the user was actually part of treatment or not during the training and during the prediction we can put that flag 1 as 0 and use the prediction to uh, find the uplift. The second approach is T-learner which is two learners. Here we train two classifiers to predict the outcome of interest. So classifier 1 will be trained only on the treatment group and classifier 2 will be trained only on the control group. The uplift prediction of user A is defined as users A prediction from classifier 1 minus users A's prediction from classifier 2. Model calibration should be necessary check in the approach. The third estimator is X-learner estimator. It's an extension of T-learner estimator. So after the two models from the T-learners are trained, an extra step is there where delta is calculated between actual effect and model's prediction. So if the user was part of treatment, then the model prediction of control is used. If the user was part of control, then the model prediction of treatment is used. So what's the advantage of this? The ML problem now becomes to predict the delta or treatment effects if the method utilizes a crucial information, which is actual effect value from the experiment. So just the difference from T-learner is that there we were subtracting the uh, prediction of the two model here we since we have the actual effect from uh, for the users from randomized trial uh, so we are using actual effect with the model prediction if the user was not part of that group and uh, predicting this delta for all the users training extra model for that now we look at direct uplift models so these are little tricky in the way uh, target transformation is done, target variable transformation is done, but I will make it very simple. So first is class transformation. The training data we know comes from a randomized control trial in which a random set of customer will be part of intervention that is a treatment group and other random set of customer will be part of the control group. So the customer can land in either test or control with 50-50 chances. Now to train a single classifier basically on a modified 
class label z so uh, the classifier is only trained with a modified class label the labeling should ensure that all persuadables are in the positive label group while all sleeping dogs are in the negative label group the uplift prediction for the user a is defined as user's a's prediction from the classifier but how we are saying that whatever the value that comes from the classifier is the actual uplift but how that happens it happens because of the way we have modified the class label z that is all persuadables are going with label 1 in the train, training part and all sleeping dogs are going with the label 0 in the training part so who are persuadables if the treatment is 1 the conversion is 1 for persuadables if the treatment is 0 the conversion is 0 for the persuadables for sleeping dogs if treatment is 1 they won't buy because we have awakened the sleeping dogs and if treatment is zero, they would have bought because they would have bought without if there was no intervention. So uh, these are the labels. Uh, what are the labels for sure things and loss causes? Let's automatically derive. If for sure things, they will anyways always buy, right? So if treatment is equal to one, conversion is one. If treatment equals zero, conversion equal to one because no matter what, they will always buy. So if treatment equal to one, conversion of one is same as the first condition of persuadable. So label one. For treatment equals 0, conversion equal to 1 is the same condition as second condition of sleep and sleeping dog. So label equal to 0. And for loss causes, they will never buy. So if treatment equal to 1, conversion equal to 0, which is the first case of sleeping dogs. And treatment equal to 0, conversion equal to 0, which is the second condition of persuadables. Now, one thing we can see that for persuadables, always the label is 1. For sleeping dogs, it's 0. For sure things, it's 1 and 0. For loss causes, also it's 0 and 1. Now we know that every uh, customer or user can have 50-50 chances to appear whether in the control group or test group. So since any individual can appear in test or control set with equal chances, the model will result in high probability uplift for persuadables and low probability for sleeping dogs and due to the averaging effect because half of the customer will have level 1, half of the customer will have level 0. Because of this averaging effect, lost causes and sure cases, sure things should settle down somewhere in between which is 0.5 so high probability for persuadables low probability for sleeping dogs and uh, the sure things and loss causes will settle somewhere in between which is 0.5 so in that way the probability that we'll get that we get will be the probability of being a persuadable and which is the direct uplift uh, next is direct uplift modeling through regression transformation so we train a single regression model based on the modified label z where z is equal to 2 into treatment minus 1 multiplied by 2 into conversion. So if we use this magical formula to transform the target variable in this regression transformed model, we will get the uplift. So how that happens, let's look into it. For persuadables, we know if we show them the advertisement, they will buy. If we don't, they won't. So if treatment equal to 1, conversion equal to 1. If treatment equal to 0, conversion equal to 0. And when we use this formula, 2 into treatment is 1, minus 1 into 2 into conversion, we get 2. And similarly, for uh, the other condition, we get 0. For sleeping dogs, uh, if we show them add, they will they won't convert. And if we don't show them add, they will convert. So when you we use this formula, we get 0 and minus 2. For sure things, they will anyways buy, whether they are part of advertisement or not. So if treatment 1 or treatment equals 0, conversion equal to 1. So values are 2 and minus 2, putting in the formula. And for loss causes, no matter we show them the advertisement or not, they will never buy. So uh, z is always 0. Now, uh, due to the averaging effect, so what will happen? Users with the same property can be part of treatment or control group. So users with the same property in the training data set will appear with label 2 as well and label 0 as well. Similarly, for sleeping dogs, the users with the same property can either be part of uh, control or treatment so they will appear with uh, label 0 as well and minus 2 as well and for sure things it will appear with 2 and minus 2 and loss causes will appear with 0 and 0 so persuadables the user with same property appears with 2 and 0 so due to the averaging effect on an average the model trained will settle somewhere in between so positive 1 the positive uplift for sleeping dogs the average is minus 1 so negative uplift for sure things 2 and minus 2 so some users are have very high value 2 some users have very low value minus 2 but they have similar characteristics so the model will settle somewhere in between which is uh, 0 so 0 uplift and for loss causes again 0 uplift so in this way once the z value variable is transformed in such a way we get the actual uplift which is 
uh, if the user is persuadable the impact uplift is positive if the user is sleeping dog the uplift is negative and uplift is almost zero for sure things and loss causes so uh, we have looked at uplift modeling and different techniques which can help us detect the actual causal effects that is direct uplift modeling and indirect through meta learners uplift modeling is still an active area of research in the data science community but its practical applications are quickly gaining popularity in the marketing world because marketing world has lot of money to put on advertisements and they want to so advertisement to the right set of persuadable set uber wayfair fidelity investment and meta instagram count themselves among the growing list of companies that rely extensively on uplift modeling a number of uplift techniques already so significant promise in driving roi that is driving roi return of investment for marketers and progress is likely to accelerate as more innovative businesses explore this approach of uplift modeling uh, next we will look at one of the instagram blog where they have explained how they have used uplift modeling and causal inference to uh, improve upon the instagram notification management system this was the blog which was recently published by instagram where they have used causal inference and uplift modeling to improve upon the instagram notification management system what i have done i have copied the content so and highlighted the major parts which will help me explain the concepts uh, easily improving instagram notification management with machine learning and causal inference so meta is applying statistics and machine learning to improve notification personalization and management on instagram particularly on daily digest push notifications by using causal inference and ml highly active users who are likely to see more content organically we have been able to reduce the number of notifications sent while also improving users overall experience, user experience so basically the notification sent was were only sent to the persuadables and as a result of which the uh, user experience increased because not uh, bombarding the users with unwanted notifications moving beyond click through rate so the before uh, causal inference or uplift modeling the model was predicting the click through rate but that is on sending a notification the user will click on the notification or not a daily digest push notification is about stories when such a notification is delivered to users device they may click on the notification an ml model called click through rate was uh, trained to detect what is the probability that customer will click on the notification or not but it was noticed that the ctr model meant a large portion of daily digest notification were sent to users who were relatively active in terms of using instagram for many high active instagram users even without sending these daily notifications they would have have viewed the corresponding stories in an organic manner why right? because they are active they would have anyways open the app and seen so sending notifications is a waste and uh, deteriorating the user experience the actually app opens up an opportunity to provide better user experience by sending fewer notifications to active users who are likely to view the stories already in a organically fashion so uh, a combination of causal inference and uplift modeling was used uh, there is a total budget on this notifications to spend so the budget to send notification is limited so it has to be sent to the most likely set of users who will become active because of that notification the key to solving this problem is figuring out the incremental value of sending a daily digest notification and whenever we when we talk about incremental value it can be done through uplift modeling so uh, an uplift modeling technique was used with predicting the uplift as the probability of user become active if sent notification was sent minus the probability of user becoming active if notification was not sent so for better product experience we can sort the notifications by incremental value so that is the customers which have highest incremental value those can be sent the notification uh, remaining within the budget essentially there is a causal inference problem and uplift modeling techniques to apply uplift models a randomized experiment was done and each notification was randomly sent and dropped for some set of customers and on that the model was trained a randomly experiment randomized experiment for uplift modeling where a notification eligible to send will be dropped randomly with 50% probability based on the data collected from this randomized experiment a neural network based uplift model was trained to predict the incremental impact between not sending and sending the daily digest notification about the stories at user level the solution of the above budget allocation problem is trivial right once we have this in, uh, incremental impact 
the uh, solution to budget allocation is very trivial we can send the notification to the users with uh, in a uh, de uh, decreasing sorted fashion of the incremental effect the users which have highest incremental effect we can send to them uh, and then the second highest third highest and so on the practice uh, in practice the notifications are generated and scored online and thus we cannot have incremental impacts ready for all the candidate notification in advance so so here they have specified on the problem that even though we have the in incremental impact we have a methodology to find the incremental impact the user can come anytime so we want to know if this is the highest incremental impact user or not so what was done an online approach to determine which notification to send or drop can be used that whenever the impact is more than r then uh, those users can be sent a notification but again the problem is uh, we observe the rate fluctuates that r may not be the right rate with that r many few very few users may get the notification or many more users can get the notification the reason being there can be drift in the model or the data so we utilize an online quantile computation service to transform the raw raw scores into a uniform distribution while preserving the orders so basically an online quantile computation service was uh, devised uh, in my uh, opinion this quantile computation service will calculate the mean and max value for that session where the users are coming and use those mean and max value to transform the raw probability score into uniform distribution and then this same methodology that whenever the score is greater than r send notification else not it can be done and doing this the advantage will be we will always have the control that how many what percentage of users we are sending the uh, notification remaining within the limited budget so yeah this was the entire solution for instagram where they have reduced the number of notifications sent by only targeting the users in the persuadable set which have highest incremental effect of becoming active when sent a notification so this is the final conclusion of the blog that by applying modeling and targeting the users with high incremental impact we reduce the sending volume substantially and we saw no decline in user engagement the benefit of this work is twofold improve user experience and reduce resource uses because uh, the cost will go down we don't have to send notification to all of them so that's it about this video where we looked at uh, uplift modeling in details we looked at how is it better than the propensity model where it can give the actual uplift or actual uh, incremental effect due to the treatment we looked at the ways in which it can be calculated through direct methods by transforming either the class variable or transforming the target variable for regression and also we looked at how it can be done in an indirect way through meta learners then we looked at uh, some of the use cases and also we looked at how instagram in one of his recent blogs have uh, specified how they have reduced the number of notifications sent to improve the user experience through these kind of methods which are uplift modeling and causal inference hope you like the video please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more such content bye